Hey, this is Hometown Mentors. I'm Aaron. I'm Peyton. You know, I remember going into my first college class, looking around, there's like a solid 400 people, man. It was just like a sea of faces. I didn't really know what to do, and like I wasn't used to like all these huge lecture classes. No, for me too, because I was really used to smaller high school style classes right, where right. you know your teacher, they know you, you have a good relationship, and they can tell when you're confused and can clarify the material, but it was not like that at all in lecture. Yeah, it was a little rough. I mean, you kind of go to these intro introduction classes, like the huge ones here, like CS50 and Econ, and like psychology, and you kind of get like lost within all the mass of students that are trying to take these really specialized classes with these very famous professors. And sometimes it kind of seems daunting kind of going there and on top of that some students might not even show up because like a lot of the stuff is like online and they can they record the lectures and so it's almost not as personalized as you might have been used to um, but there's also an alternative that a lot of classes do to help you out with that and the alternative is usually section so section is a smaller setting um, the amount of students varies depending on what class you're taking but usually you'll have a much smaller setting than lecture you'll have a tf a teaching fellow or another type of teaching assistant who's not your professor teaching you, they're also very trained on the material and they can help you more one-on-one. -on -one. It's much more like a classroom setting. You can build a relationship with your TF, they clarify the material for you, and they just make sure that you personally know what's going on so you're not left behind. In addition, many of your classes will allow you to use your laptops in class to take notes. Now the laptops are really efficient because you can type really fast and get all your notes in. Um, but it might even be effective to write it out because you might retain the information better. Um, however, there are times where the lecture is like flying by and you won't like wait for you to catch up on lecture slides. So laptops are pretty efficient. But other classes actually won't let you use your laptop because they want a more personalized experience, especially for sections. And so having a laptop uh, you won't be allowed. So you have to like pretty much gauge it for each individual class based on like the syllabus and then the demands of the professor or TF or anybody that's teaching the class. Also, when you use your laptop, there's a higher chance that you're going to be distracted by different social medias or iMessage. So if you know you're going to be distracted by those things, it might be best for you just to take notes the old-fashioned way using paper and pen, where you know those distractions will be minimized. And studies show that taking notes by paper and pen can actually be more beneficial because when you're handwriting, you're writing slower than typing, so you can't actually write down everything the professor is saying verbatim. Them. Hence, you're forced to consolidate your notes, which could actually be really beneficial for you if right, typing on your laptop is distractive. Yeah, we know you got the iMessage going, so let's get it going. Now, while you're writing in your notebook or on your laptop, hopefully not too much iMessage, it's really important that you get actively involved in lecture. And this is a good way for your professor to gauge how, if you know the material or if you need help, or for your professor to get to know you a lot better. And this is really crucial because also a lot of classes have participation grades and so that your professors almost keep tab on how actively you're participating and it also lets the lecture flow and you won't have that awkward silence where no one's like really speaking up and the professor's trying to get everybody to speak. And really don't be afraid to ask questions in lecture because chances are the question that you have, a hundred other students have the same question. Also another thing you want to realize is that there's office hours as well. And a lot of students are kind of intimidated because you have these like big time name professors that you can go to the office hours for for like two hours and it's, it can be kind of intimidating, kind of like uh, stepping up to these people. Um, but you shouldn't feel intimidated because that's, that's what they're there for. They're there to help you and they're going to actively engage with you. And it doesn't have to even be about the material. Even if you have like a question about like anything that's going on in your life or you just want to talk about your day, uh, professors are more than like, like happy to do that with you. So don't be afraid to go up to them and approach them. Exactly. I mean, professors become professors because they want to interact with the students. They want to get to know you on a personal level. They want to be able to see that you're excited about the material that they're teaching. So really go to office hours as much as you can. But another thing to consider when you're scheduling is to look at your class times and office hours times because you want to make sure they don't conflict and you don't want to be able, you don't want to have to not go to office hours because you have to be at another class. So definitely keep that in mind when you're scheduling so you can make sure that you're building good relationships with all of your professors. And when you build that really good relationship with your professor, your professor might even invite you out for dinner and Harvard will pay for it or your college will pay for it. And it's like a really good time. Um, it, it gets to you, it, uh, it connects you with your professor, and he can also be like a guidance or a mentor for you in the future. 
And this can also help you get an internship or get a job. And many professors, despite what they're actually teaching you, have very diverse interests. They could be interested in public policy or politics and also chemistry. So whatever you're interested in, chances are your professor knows about it or knows someone who's about it who, or who knows about it. And they're a lot more likely to give away any internships or teaching assistant programs that they have to students that they already know and already have a relationship with. And this can give you a better personalized letter of recommendation. And now some professors will even ask your TFs or uh, any of your uh, CAs or anybody that's like teaching and like helping you about how you are as a student, how you were in lab, how you were in section. And uh, by having this relationship with your professor, they'll be able to gauge like how you are as an individual and like, actually say how you participate in class and how you are as a student a lot better than if you kind of fade away and kind of just take notes and not really interact with your professors in the class around you. Thanks for watching Hometown Mentors, and if you like the videos, please subscribe.